Hello. Shalom, everybody. Once again, this is Reverend Edmund Smith. And for those who are new to this channel, welcome to SIMB TV. SIMB stands for She is My Brother. Well, I am a pastor and also an ex transgender. And right now, I am actually on a ferry in New Zealand traveling to Christchurch. We are we are in a camper van. A camper van is something like a caravan. Um, and we have parked our camper van on a big gigantic ferry and we are heading to Christchurch. And doing Christchurch is something that has been in my bucket list. So another checklist in my bucket list. Why so? Because I studied in Christchurch Educational College which is uh, the place where I did my studies in special education and for those who don't know I'm actually I was a special educational teacher before I became a pastor that was in the 90s I was in the teaching line for about 15 years before I decided to become a pastor of which I am today um, just let me show you around a little bit before I continue with this video. Yeah. All right. I don't. I don't think I look amazing now because I had very little, little sleep uh, when waking up early in the morning. Whew, I took a nap and just woke up. So, um, pardon me for the sleepy face. Actually, I would like to speak a little bit on gender fluidity. You know, this is the thing now in the society that we live in. It is said that gender, sex, gender and sex are no longer binary. And for those of you who are wondering what's binary, binary means two, male and female. I mean, as long as um, we lived in the, as long as we lived in this um, life, I always knew that sex and gender are binary. Okay, let let me first differentiate the difference between sex and gender. Sex is um, your biological your what you were born with what's in between your legs your genitalia your chromosomes x y for the male and x x for the female so what you know you it's, it's the physical aspect of you that's your sex and gender on the other hand on the <laughs> gender on the other hand is is uh, what gender you perceive yourself to be sex is like male or female gender is man or woman or boy or girl so that's the difference and there's a saying that says that gender is um, in between your head sorry is in between your ears what's in your head you could be having a penis but you could um, believe or think that you are actually a woman like me my sex had always been male I was born male I have, I have a penis I am XY chromosome in my um, in my genes but in my head I always believe I was a woman so sex is down there gender is up here but of course thank god i've been set free from um, believing or thinking that i am a woman so today my sex and my gender is uh, in sync which is easy which is beautiful in other words i've been set free from a transgender identity 
So anyone who has the opposite in terms of sex and gender, they actually have a transgender identity. For normal people, for regular people, if you have a you have a um, female, for example, if you have a female sex and you believe that you're a woman, then you, you people like you are known as those with a cisgender identity. Cis is spelled as C-I-S. So that, that, that was me establishing sex and gender. So sex is down there, gender is up here. So today, my sex and my gender, you know, um, are in sin. They go along the same way. So I believe and many people believe that um, sex and gender are binary but nevertheless there are a whole bunch of people and the numbers are increasing and they don't believe that sex and gender are binary and particularly gender they say that people can be men, women or anything in between some claim there are about hundreds, hundred or even more than hundred sorts of gender. So well, people like me find it difficult to comprehend such an idea. They, they are known as people with a non-binary gender identity. So you are not allowed to call them he, even though they are male down there or female down there. But to them, to these non-binary gender people, it's an offense to call them he or she. We are supposed to call them they or them or z or something else. And as the days go by, more and more types of gender is being um, declared by people so it's getting confusing so anyway that's not even what this video is all about this video is about it's a response to the risk the most recent video i made sorry no it was the last last video i made and um in that video i spoke about um how important it is for every one of us to have male and female love. How important it is for us to have to receive male from men and women. I brought up Ecclesiastes 4.12 where the word of God says, you know, it's not good for us to be alone. It's better for us to have at least one other person in our lives, which is two is better than one. And it all it continues with three cords cannot be broken in other words three is the best and i shared that in that video i have a three cord three cords relationship which is the three cords are me and my wife and my dpr deep platonic relationship slash brother slash god brother so three of us bind together makes a three cord relationship and I also mentioned that, you know, we were created by, as a human, God used a man and a woman to create us. No two men can create a child or no two women can create a child. I mean, yes, two men can raise up a child, two women can raise up a child, but to create, that shows, that tells us a lot, you know, that tells us God's desire. So I mentioned that it's important for us and especially for those of us who are married to the opposite gender and it's not healthy or not wise to actually think that um, oh I have this opposite gender spouse and I don't need anyone else in my life which is that's foolishness I always believe that it's so important to have both gender people in our lives both types of love yeah gender has love there's feminine love and masculine love males or men has the power to give up masculine love and women and females uh, has the power to give up feminine love 
So this video I, I'm, I'm making right now is in a response to that video. And when I made that video, many people responded to it, and particularly one of uh, a friend of mine, Xenia, she she said that you know um, she was read watching my video and she felt that well actually she thinks that some men are not that masculine they are feminine so they also have the power to give out feminine love and on the other hand some women who they may not be so feminine and they also have to give out they are able to give out masculine love and i have to disagree you see, no matter how, the truth is, I myself am not that masculine. I mean, simply because I come from a transgender background. I was a transgender from the time I was 4 years old, all the way to 21 years of age. So obviously, I never had a boyhood, I only had a girlhood. You know, as a child, I only had, I, I never had a, I never, I, I don't know what it means to play with guns and, and do the boy stuff. You know, to do the masculine stuff. I only were were involved in feminine activities, quote unquote girl kind I played with dolls and tea sets and stuff. So I have loads and loads of femininity downloaded downloaded inside of my of my system. I grew up, I was a girl, a trans girl, all the way to 21 years of age. But the fact is I'm still male and the fact is I'm still man. And because I'm male, no matter how feminine I am, I do not have the power to give out feminine love. I was created by God with um, masculine genitalia, masculine male chromosomes XY, and for a reason. It just is if you're watching this and you have been created by God with XX chromosomes and you have a female genitalia, you know, there is a reason why. You know, the things that God is not stupid and whatever He does, He does it for a reason. You know, the Word of God says, God created us in His image and it does not stop there. It's, it continues with, in His image, He created us, male and female. That speaks of, when God says, when God says He created us in His image, it simply means that we are also spiritual beings just like Him, unlike plants and animals. But that, that beautiful verse does not stop that. It continues with the second aspect of the importance of our being. The first aspect, the first important part of our being is us being in the image of God, which is we are spiritual beings. The second part of us that's important is we are sexual beings. Our sexuality is important. Our gender is important. Our sexuality, which is our sex and gender, was God's intention. It is no coincidence. So in conclusion, I would say that no matter if you're if you're male, of course you're supposed to be a man. But of course some of us things go things went wrong, like for me things went wrong. I, I believe I was a woman but if you're a male means you're supposed to be a woman and you only have the power to give up masculine love no matter how feminine you are yes femininity and masculinity is fluid but sex and gender are not fluid so you can be fem you can be female you can be a woman and you can be very masculine and it's okay it's okay to be a woman, a female, and to be very masculine. It's okay to be a male and a man and be very feminine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm a father of two children and I'm still very feminine in many ways. And it's okay with that. But no matter how feminine I am, I can only give out masculine love. I know this is a kind of a confusing topic, but I'm not here to confuse. I hope that everyone just learn something from this video have a good day just celebrate your sex celebrate your gender celebrate giving out the kind of love that you have the power to give out shalom god bless